In this round of Grasshopper architecture tutorial, uh, I want to model the Eisenberg uh, business hub in Grasshopper, in Rhino and Grasshopper, so you can understand how we can model these sections, as you can see in this building, and it's rotating to reach this section. So I'm going to show you how uh, to make this in Rhino and Grasshopper. Before we start this tutorial, uh, I'm going to show you some of the images of this building and also a video about uh, how this building has been built. So uh, be sure to watch the video till the end because then we'll start modeling this in Rhino and Grasshopper. Before we start this tutorial, uh, if you're new to our channel, welcome, uh, consider subscribing because we have weekly tutorials and I will also put up a video up here which is about what is Rhino and Grasshopper and why you should learn it and also a beginner's tutorial. So if you're new to our channel, you can watch this playlist and also we have an advanced uh, lessons about Grasshopper weekly, we, uh, we are going to switch on. Uh, two or three uh, weekly tutorials for our course. So be sure to watch our course lessons also up here. I will put the playlist. Uh, you can see what we are adding to the course and enroll in our Paro course lessons. Okay, let's get started from scratch. Okay, so first what we have to do is to produce the base surface of the structure. And as you can see, I have modeled this in Rhino. I'm going to explain how we can uh, produce and model this surface. So the base of this is if you look at this, we have a complete arc on this here, which is, uh, let me just draw this, 270 degrees. Then we go down, we have a 180 degrees arc, and then we will have to extend that in a line, right? So we have two sections here. Then we will give the uh, rails for the up and down, and these sections for the surface, and we're good to go. So remember, we have to make those arcs, the sections, and then finish the model. So now what we want to do is to go to the arc. I'm going to give it a zero, so the center is zero. I'm going to use the shift key to make an auto and bring that like uh, 270 degrees. And that's going to go a little bit up, remember. Before that, I'm going to again draw an arc and use to snap to this and make this 180 degrees. So let's just bring this up. This is based on your project and the height of the project you want. And now what we want to do is to extend this arc. So I'm going to type extend. You can use is the extend tool here. Uh, let's just type this, extend. Uh, we don't need a boundary, so we just say okay. The curve to extend is going to be a line. The type is a line. And we just select this one. We extend it to the end and reach the snap. Okay, the snap is has to be on and we'll finish that. Okay, the next is the section. So I'm going to draw a section here, a section at the end of the arc. We have to find that. And that's the not OS snap on. And I'm going to click here, use the control key to bring it up and snap into my second arc. And again, this one. So now what we want to do is to produce a surface from this. And the command which uses that 
rails is sweep two. The sweep two command uses two rails. This will be the first rail, this will be the second rail, and these are going to be the sections, right? So what we want to do is to use the sweep two, the first rail, second rail, sections, and OK. And you can see that it's, a, it's going to give you a neat and a uniform nerve surface. We can also rebuild that if we want to make it more uniform. So remember to rebuild it if you want to. And you can see that these ISO curves are uh, completely correct because they are going up and they are not tilted. So uh, what we want to do is to uh, work with this in Grasshopper and get started. So uh, I'm going to go to the params menu, go to the geometry and select a surface to set it to this surface. And let's just turn this off and delete these uh, lines. We will need the line at the bottom, so I'm going to just delete these lines, okay? Uh, the next section, uh, the next part of this tutorial is to how to find those uh, curves on this one. And as you can see, it's going to be perpendicular. And then when we go forward at this part, it's going to be a little bit tilted, right? So uh, how can we do that? I'm going to go to the curve section, set this curve to the base curve at the bottom. And now uh, use a tool in the curve section called the perpendicular frames. OK, if you don't know about this, we also have another tutorial about perpendicular frames. So I will put it up here. Check it out. Uh, for now, we can just set this to the curve and increase the number of the counts of the perpendicular frames. This will give you perpendicular frames on the base of this surface. OK, now we have to bring sections on this surface with these frames. I'm going to go to the intersection and select this one, mathematical B-Rep plane. That means we want to intersect the B-Rep with a plane. So we can give this to the B-Rep and these to the plane. Okay, after we give that, there's a problem. As you can see, we have sections here. The reason here is that some of these planes, because plane is in the mathematical section, that means it's infinite. Uh, what happens is that this plane is going to go extended and have an intersection also with this part, okay? So if we just go into the curve section, you can see that we have uh, two, sometimes uh, two different sections, sometimes one. Uh, how can we just extract the one we want? The way and the technique you can use is really simple. First, we're going to connect a point to these planes. That means we're going to interest, uh, in extract the uh, center of these planes. Then what I want to do is to go to the curve section and select a point on curve. So I'm going to uh, extract a point on, on these curves, okay? And you can see that we can see these uh, sections. Uh, when I go up and down, what I want to do is to extract a point and find the nearest one to the center of the plane. You can see that this one is exactly what we are doing, what we want to extract, right? So we can just put that at the start. Now, uh, what I want to do is to find the distance between these, right? So I'm going to use a CP point, a CP point to do that. You can also search for CP and select the closest point, okay? When we say CP point, we are searching the distance between these points and the center of this, right? And remember, you have to also graph this. So uh, each of those sections, you can see we have uh, 35 groups go to 35 centers, okay? If you don't know why I'm graphing this, because perhaps Grasshopper is a little bit advanced and it's a programming language, we have to make them into the same data we are analyzing. So if you don't know about graph, you can watch a tutorial up here, I will put it, and I have explained about graph, flatten, and those things. Okay, now what we have to do is to, let me connect a panel to the distance here, okay? You can see when we have two different sections, some of them are near the center point or the plane point, and some of them are far, okay? We need to extract that one which is near it. So first of all, I'm going to use this technique of sort and sort these keys. So it's going to sort it. You can see that it has... Let me just show you here. 
it has changed the location of 35 and 0. So it's going to sort uh, from minimum to maximum. As we are sorting these values, we have to also sort those curves. So I'm going to, you can always add different curves to this. So I'm going to say by sorting these distances, also sort these curves. Okay. So this will be the first curve and this will be the second curve. Now what we want to do is to extract all the first uh, inputs. So I'm going to go to the sets and pick up the list item and select the first one. Okay. Uh, excuse me, from the curves. We want to select the first one and that's it. So remember the technique when you want to use uh, plane because it's infinite, it's going to intersect with different sections of your curve is this technique. You have to, uh, first of all, uh, pick up a point, uh, then extract the point of the plane, use a CP point to find the distance, sort it, and then pick up the curves on the first distance, right? And this will give you the curves. That's it. So the problem here is that it's a curved uh, a section. We want a straight line, okay? If I want to show you here, we need a straight line. So that's also easy. We want to go to the curve section and pick up this endpoints. And we can extract the start and the end and make it or remodel this with a line. So that's really going to help us to make this happen, okay? I'm going to turn everything off. And now you can see that you have made those lines from that surface. We can also uh, increase or decrease the numbers of this. Let's just turn this off and have the base sections, okay? Uh, if I bake these lines and select all of them and put on the analyze direction, you can see that every all of them are going up, but the last one is going down, okay? So the problem here is that the last one uh, is in a different direction from all of the other curves. Again, we have to fix this because it's going to have a problem with the sweep we're going to use or about the extrusion. The technique is, first of all, we have to flatten this because these lines are in groups. So we have uh, 49 groups. Again, when we flatten, we have 49 lines in one group. So uh, check out the flatten and graph tutorial. So I'm going to flatten this. We have this 49 lines. Uh, then just type flip. We have different flip tools, but we want to use the flip curve. So I'm going to use this flip curve and give it to this you need to uh, say a guide line okay a guide uh, curve we want to pick the first line so i'm going to go to the sets and pick up the list item the first line is the guide and says uh, flip all of those curves based on the first line so now if i bake this uh, you can see that all of them are in one direction. So this is another technique you have to use uh, if you want to uh, have them all in one direction. And remember, Grasshopper is a little bit more complicated than Rhino. A rhino will maybe sort of find the direction itself, but for Grasshopper, you have to have the right direction. Okay, that's it. Now we have to finish this tutorial by giving them a thickness. So I'm going to go and use the offset tool. Uh, give the curves to the offset and you can see some of them are going to go inside some of them are going to go outside we have to fix that by giving the plane of this the curves uh, what is the plane of these curves we had them here right we have to uh, offset them in these planes so we can just give that to the plane turn that off and now you can see that they are all going to go in one direction because we want to go outside we can just go expression and say minus x and offset that in the direction okay now we have to just join them together so i'm going to uh, pick up a curve just to explain why we have to graft or flatten this okay when you offset a curve, you can see it's going to put it in groups. So first of all, this base curve is not in groups and this one is in groups. If we want to lock these together, and let me just put them into one group so I can explain that, we have to have groups of two. So remember, you have to graph this. So both of these lines 
are in one uh, set of groups and you can see when we add them up we have a problem here okay uh, the next thing about offset is that when it has it puts it in one groups it gives a zero to that okay so when you working with offset remember this technique we have talked this about in our course lessons many times when you're offsetting remember uh, first check the graph then second check the simplify thing right click and simplify we have talked this about in uh, also you can watch the uh, flatten graph tutorial again that will put up all the zeros down and then we will have them all in groups of two that means we want to loft them two by two and that's the technique we can use so i'm going to loft these together and we can just increase the distance and you can see that this is exactly what the structure looks like and now we have to just give that an extrusion and uh, uh, a thickness if we want to uh, how can we do that we can extrude that in the normal direction so if we go to the planes the technique you can use is to give a uh, params and a vector to the plane so another technique if you just give a vector to a frame it's going to give the z direction of that and we can use that for our project so now we have to extrude it's just about flatten and graft again these are in, not in groups these are in groups so i'm going to graph that and then multiply that with uh, in the math section multiply that with a number so i'm going to give that a number and then give that to the extrusion so you can also extrude that in the normal direction that's it and you can see that it's going to give you the results okay again we can control the offset we can decrease the numbers so you can see how great it is for grasshopper to help you with your projects if you want to produce the structure because if you want to make that in uh, rhino you can't control the thickness you can't control the numbers and you have to uh, change it all the time but now if you just give the base surface and the line of the curve excuse me if you give the base surface and the base curve you will always have these structural sections on the model so you can just bake that and produce the results so that was the tutorial of uh, how you can make that let's just close this one uh, how you can make those sections and then you can just work with that surface to build your project and uh, go forward. Okay, that was a tutorial of how you can make this in Rhino Grasshopper. Thanks for watching. Remember to like this video so it can uh, reach other people. Because if you like our video, uh, YouTube will show you more of our videos. And also uh, subscribe to our channel and also comment on this video. It will really help us to grow. And see you next time.